What's going on, people? It's Al York Sports with another one. Uh, another thing I got to put out there before I start my show is uh, it's ironic how all these videos now, how people putting hip hop on them. I went on through the gram yesterday. It's like every sports site got the uh, the hip hop music with the videos. Now, you know, I started that shit nine years ago. Now, I'm not going to say I'm the first one that started with music because I remember with CBS and NFL which I got the concept from, used to play instruments, you know, like violins and shit like that. And that's what kind of gave me the idea to flip it to what I like. So just to put another one out there for y'all, y'all know who started that, that hip-hop shit with the sports. I mean, it's clear as day. And it's not the first thing they snatched up because, like I told you guys, an artist knows his work. So just like the comedians know who's biting from who. Rappers know who's biting from who, and then you got beat makers that know who's biting from who. And you don't have to be rich to get bitten from. If anything, I could keep telling y'all, they go to the cellar to take people's material. And I'm in a cellar. So I just want to put that out there so y'all can know what it is, sink it in your mind. That's why when I put content creator and all that, a lot of my shit I create and then it runs off before I can even make a dollar off of it. And I got people that say, Al, but why do you keep doing it? I got to do it. What, what I'm going to do, save it for another dude could come out with, them, with it before, nigga? Nah, man. I got to put it out there and just live with it, man. I just got to live with it. And now let's go to the topic at hand. Let's go to the uh, NFL playoffs. We're going to start in MMT Stadium where the Baltimore Ravens host the Kansas City Chiefs. The line opened up at minus 4. 44 for the Baltimore Ravens. Now, I'm going to give y'all the statistics, then I'm going to give my opinion on the game. The final score was 17-10 Chiefs. Chiefs prevail once again over Lamar Jackson and company. Let me give y'all the numbers first. Let me take these off, and we're going to start off real quick. Lamar Jackson, 20 out of 37, 272 yards. One touchdown, one interception, had a QBR of 42.9. He also rushed for eight rushes for 54 yards. And Zay Flowers let him receive him with five receptions for 115 yards, a fumble in the end zone, and a stupid taunting. When he caught that deep pass, he started taunting, and they moved him back 15 yards. They also took points off the ball there. Baltimore finished with 353 total yards. And turned over the ball. One turnover. They had one turnover in the game. No, no, actually, I'm lying. They had three turnovers, I think. Uh, I know Zay Flowers fumble in the end zone. Uh, three turnovers. Lamar Jackson got sacked fumble. Lamar Jackson threw a pick. So that was three turnovers for the Baltimore Ravens, and you're not going to beat the champions with three turnovers. Now we're going to go to the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes, 30 for 39, 241. One touchdown, no picks, QBR 91.1. Lamar had a 42.9, he got a 91.1. I mean, that he's far a better quarterback than Lamar Jackson. Pacheco, 24 rushes, 68 yards, one touchdown. And Travis Kelsey, the incredible tight end who continues to get open, who continues to catch his balls and continues to make a difference. 11 catches, 116 yards, one touchdown. They had 330 yards total and one turnover they had. Uh, I mean, you, they won the turnover battle, 3-1. to one. They won the game 17-10. Now we're going to go off the game. Now I'm a freestyle to y'all off the game. First of all, the Ravens came out flat. You're the favorite. You're favorite to win it all. You, to me, you got the better roster. And you lose the game. Hold up, y'all. Give me one minute. I got to plug this thing in right here. Give me one minute. I forgot to plug this thing. This light's about to go out. I need this light on. Give me one minute. Ah, man. Wrong switch. Here we go. Let me see. Hold up. Give me one minute. Hey, when that happens, but I have to do it. Yeah, so you can't. You can't come out flat if you bought them all. You just can't. You're playing the champions. I understand that you got to switch it up because the champions are smart. They're going to take you out of your game. So if this was a boxing match, KC was Floyd Mayweather. 
And what I mean by that is they'll take away everything that you do best. So that's what KC did. They kept Lamar from scram scrambling on the outside, forced them to run in the inside where it was cluttered in case he was running. Then they gave him basically everything underneath, little two-yard passes, three-yard passes. Andy Reid coached a perfect game, but even saying that, I'm not giving Lamar Jackson no excuses. He underachieved, no matter how you cut it. Okay, he had 20 for 37, 272 yards. For him, that's a good game. But a lot of that was garbage yardage. That was a prevent defense yardage late that KC was giving him everything underneath. I mean, they had a couple bombs there, but they didn't go for touchdowns. But back to Lamar Jackson. I got to break my man down. I love me, Lamar Jackson, but I, you know, I got to keep it 100 with y'all. Lamar Jackson... Like, I heard people, you know, saying, oh, this is why he didn't get the bag. This is why they were delaying on the bag. He should never got that money. Y'all motherfuckers is dead wrong. Let me explain to y'all. He got paid for the body of work he did all regular season. The playoffs is not considered the regular season. You have to play good in the regular season to make the playoffs, but that's a different animal. So the body of work he pulled off in the regular season was MVP. He was the MVP, most valuable player. You can't take nothing away from him for that. So to me, he earned his bag. But now, playoff play, he's not doing it. He's another Kirk Cousins, another Dak Prescott, another Donovan McNabb, where they ball out. And when it counts most, they come up short. Dak Prescott's another one. I guarantee you, when this contract runs out, it's going to be 17 willing to give him 300 amps. 17 because he lights it up in the regular season. Just not a closer. Then you got cats like Eli Manny, who has basically no body or work in the regular season. He's a career 500 quarterback. For those who don't know what that means, he got 200, I think it's 17 career wins, 217 career losses. All the guys I mentioned to you are way over 500 in win losses. But one thing about Eli, he performs in the playoffs. Not only the playoffs, he won two chips against the GOAT, Tom Brady. And people, yeah, yeah but I was the defense. No, listen, it was the whole team that won. But in both games, Eli Manning had the deciding drive to win that game. With one great catch, which it was a great breakaway from Eli when he hit Tyree, and the other one when he hit Manningham on that perfect throw. It was a perfect throw, perfect catch. So the moral of that story is that Eli is a playoff championship quarterback. Lamar Jackson is a regular season quarterback. So you cannot say he didn't deserve his bag. What you could say is that he's fucking choked because he did choke again. Now, he, he didn't have a turnover to the end of the game, which was a horrible one. I mean, he threw it to a three-on-one coverage. I mean, if they would have scored there, they could have tried to have won the game. And not to mention Zay Flowers, I understand. Listen, you can't blame his effort because one thing I, I, I knocked Baltimore Ravens for was effort. But Zay Flowers gave everything he had. I mean, he tried to die for that, and the dude ripped him. The dude that he taunted on top of was the one that Peter Tillman his ass right before he hit the end zone. He tried to stretch it out. I think it was Sneed. I don't know. I might get the name wrong. But I know he punched it out. The ball came out right before he scored. Another game changer. So not only did Baltimore didn't play their best game, I didn't, I didn't appreciate the effort. I mean, think about this. And they had three turnovers to one. If you came out and played your game and had less turnovers and Lamar performed, they win this game. I hate to say it. They win this game. But now let's slide over to my man Pat Mahomes, Mr. Clutch, Mr. Michael Jordan, Mr. Floyd Mayweather. And what I mean by Floyd Mayweather is he's as patient as you have to be. One thing about Mahomes, he don't rush anything. If it ain't there, he doesn't throw it. He'll run the ball.
Patrick Mahomes to me has the chance to be the greatest quarterback ever. A lot of y'all gonna look at me crazy. Al, you bugging, man. Drew Brees up there, Tom Brady. I get it, Joe. Ma I get it. I get it. But at this age, at this age, what he's accomplished, if he gets another chip, he ties Tom Brady at this age. I think they both got like the same amount of yardage. Brady might be leading in wins. I don't know. I, there's a statistic there I'll put up, but everything is equivalent to Brady. You ask me. Now, what, what he won't probably ecl eclipse is the seven chips. Brady been to 10 uh, Super Bowls, got seven, seven and three record. Uh, Mahomes could be three and one if he wins this one. I said if Mahomes could get five, five, and then maintain and get the records that Brady got, you could put Mahomes in there. Not now. I mean, eventually. You know, barring no injury, continue. You know he's not going to continue at this pace. But like I said, if he gets four or five chips and then just be relevant for the rest of his career, he will might be considered the GOAT all time. I, I'm going to say right now, if he doesn't get hurt, he's going to accomplish that. You heard it from me first. Let's go back to the game. Kansas City played a better game. They looked like the veteran team on the field. Uh, they got what they needed from Pacheco. Pacheco played hurt, 24 rushes, 68 yards. And Kelsey, what else can you say about Travis Kelsey? Got his woman there, got all the attention. I think he's kind of smart in a way because that takes the attention off the Chiefs, if you know what I'm saying. Putting that camera on her takes the attention off of them so it could kind of let them do their thing a little easier, if you know what I'm talking about. But like I said, it, it, it was a great game by the Chiefs, Baltimore superiorly underachieved they lacked effort had a lot of guys disappeared i mean i heard odell's name once i think I, I i didn't hear bateman's name all game i heard andrew's name once and to me they running game didn't exist lamar's the only one and i think they had 54 yards rushing this is for coming from the best rushing team in football Jim Harbaugh, I had so much respect for. I still got respect for Jim Harbaugh. Or John Harbaugh, let me say it right. Jim is the one that won in Michigan. John Harbaugh is the Baltimore coach, the twin brother. But he didn't have his guys prepared. I mean, I know he thought he did. But with that effort, I want to see cats scratching and crawling. The Lions lost, but they were scratching and crawling. I didn't see that from Baltimore, dog. They wasn't even putting pressure on Pat Mahomes, dog. Nothing worked for them. They couldn't get no turnovers. They couldn't put pressure on Mahomes. Lamar couldn't get off. They had no running game. And it's ironic that that game was 17 to 10 because if you ask me, this had the ability to be a blowout, a KC blowout, because they did everything better. Now, one thing I can say, like my man T, I could... My man T, the big Chiefs fan, I told him that Mahomes played game management in the second half and they were playing field goal position, uh, field position. Let me say it right. Meaning like they wasn't really trying to score quicker. They were trying to prevent making mistakes. Mahomes get the first down, eat the clock. If you notice, he always call high with the clock around about four or three seconds because they were utilizing the clock. They knew that their defense was good enough to beat Lamar, that Lamar wasn't going to do nothing, so they played ball control second half. That's not to make excuses why they didn't score, but they didn't have to score. You see, they, they still won by seven. So great game call by Andy Reid and company. Mahomes is Mahomes. He's the better quarterback. He's been proven he's the better quarterback. He's probably the best quarterback. He's the best quarterback now in the league. Eventually might be the greatest ever. And they just play a better game than the Ravens. I still think the Ravens are a better team overall. But I guess the best quarterback thing goes way further than what a lot of people think. And when we break down that Super Bowl, I'm not going to break it down now. Me and T going to make a special video on that. We're going to break down that Super Bowl. But Salute to the Kansas City Chiefs, who I personally thought they wasn't going to get here. I thought maybe one playoff win and they would exit. I thought Buffalo would get them. So I was wrong about the Chiefs because my thing was, how are you going to win? Patrick Mahomes didn't look as good all year. He's lacking receivers. Kelsey looked like he lost a step. And then just like the Chicago Bulls, once they made the playoffs, 
They took their game to a whole other level. That's the Kansas City Chiefs for y'all. Salute to my man, Big T, true, true Chiefs fan. He's happy as hell. Listen, you can't hate, man. That guy, you know why I love, I love that guy? He, that dude been there when they were suffering. And I seen a couple years when I used to go to the barbershop and used to wear the Chiefs shit, and they, were, they wasn't even making it to the playoffs. So to see him rise, you, you know, you, I'm not a hater, man. I'm happy for him, and that's why he's enjoying every minute of this. So salute to the Kansas City Chiefs. Back to the Super Bowl versus the San Francisco 49ers, who right now I'm going to go to that game real quick. 49ers won 34-31 in Levi's Stadium. Let me give you all the stats, then I'm going to give you all the freestyle. Jared Goff, 25 for 41, 273, one touchdown, no interceptions, 59.9 QBR. He did not lose the game, folks. Jared Goff, everybody was talking about they don't trust Jared Goff. I told y'all he's a different Jared Goff, and he proved it. He did good enough to win this game. We're going to get why they lost. Montgomery, 15 rushes, 93 yards. They ran the ball for like 182 yards. Receiver Sam Laporta, nine receptions, 97 yards. You ask me, Detroit Lions offense did everything they had to do to win this game. Let's go to the Frisco Niners. Brock Purdy, 30, 20 for 31, 267, one touchdown, one interception. Christian McCaffrey, a.k.a. C-Mac, 20 rushes, 90 yards, two touchdowns. Debo Samuel, eight receptions, 89 yards, 49ers with 422 total yards. Detroit with 442. So both of them was moving the rock. It was just moving the rock. This was a game. I love, I love Dan Campbell. Let me make that clear to every, all of y'all. I heard somebody, my boy Noah Parker, posted earlier. This is how he got here, going for it on fourth down. I'm going to agree, but I'm going to disagree. When I seen him go for it on fourth down a lot of times this season, one time I would say it was for midfield when they played the Chargers. It was a tie game with two minutes late, fourth and five. And I could see why he went for it. Because his defense wasn't playing good that day, and you don't want to get Herbert the ball with two minutes at home, knowing that Herbert's top five quarterback in the NFL. Listen, I co-signed that. Yesterday, I didn't co-sign neither going for it, and I'm going to explain to you why. You already got a 17-point lead, 10-point lead, 7-point lead, right? When you kick the field goal, you stretch the league out. Now, if it's tie game, I'm with you. I'm with you, Campbell, because you're not going to be Frisco with field goals. So, I, I listen, I'm with you. But when you have a 10 and a 7-point lead and you can stretch it more, you got to kick the field goal. Dan Campbell, you are not Riverboat Ron or Riverboat Dan. You is Dan Campbell. We know you got heart. I love your energy. I love your style. But I hate to say it. You lost the game for your team, coach. Your team ran through the wall for you, gave you a 24-7 lead, and you didn't coach them up right. Going for it in the third quarter, me and my man, my man uh, B-Rabbit, B-Rabbit immediately said when they went for it and didn't make it, Frisco's going to win. I'm like, how did Frisco win? They're still down. Mega point. He said, Al, trust me. That right there was like the Green Bay game when Green Bay missed that field goal late. The difference was that was in the fourth quarter. This one was in the third quarter. And he told me, bet them right now. And I listened to him, and I made extra money by betting them at that moment because that was what you call a game changer. You have to get the points. When your team works so hard on a drive because in the second half, Frisco made them work for everything they got. First half, they would eating through that defense. Second half, they was making them work. You got to take what was there. You don't let your team work three-minute drives, you know, and then they don't make it on third down, and you disregard the field goal, and you go for it twice on fourth down. Like I said, I'm with my boy Noah. He did that all year, but not with leads like that. Tie game, trailing, I'm all for it. But when you got a lead, you want to stretch the league out. Or... 
or if you in the red zone or at the 10 yard line I agree with it because now if you don't make it the other team has to drive 90 to 80 yards so I'm with that also but when you're going for it at your own 35 on 40 where you make it a short field for Frisco with all them weapons and you know they coming because they down Dan Campbell I respect you like I respect any other coach that I love. You fucked this up for your team, bro. I don't want to hear Jared Goff did it. Nope. Jared Goff did a stink, bro. 25 for 41, 273, no, no turnovers. No turnovers for Goff. He did everything that you asked him for. Not to mention one of them fourth down plays. He, he, he didn't throw it perfect, but the guy got two hands on it. I think it was Reynolds, if I'm correct. Two hands, you have to make the catch. And then, you want me to knock even further? You got 182 yards rushing. You didn't rush not one time on that fourth and three. And what was the other one? Fourth and five, fourth and four. You should at least try to run it once. They couldn't stop the run. They couldn't. Look at the numbers. 182 yards rushing. Just like the Green Bay Packers did, the Lions did the same. Frisco didn't win this game. These guys lost the game. Making crucial mistakes when it mattered. Taking none away from Frisco because you still got to deliver. You still got to do your part. And that's exactly what they did. Because when they smell the Lions fucking up and going for it and, and they seen their faces drop and all that, they capitalized, bro. They smell blood and they went after that shit, bro. Like an animal in the jungle. When they smell blood, hyenas, they get all up on them bodies, bro. Frisco smelled blood, and they came after it, and they executed, and then now they're in the Super Bowl because of teams that are not accustomed to being there, taking none away from the Packers, but be but Love is a rookie. Love, not a rookie. Love, Love never been there. Let me just say that. Love got years sitting on the bench, but he's still very young in quarterbacking. So I can see him choking. Golf is different. That's why Golf didn't choke. Golf been in the Super Bowl. Did his thing. The coach choked. I'm going to blame Love and I'm going to blame Goff. And I'm going I'm to blame the team in Green Bay too because, you know, the mistakes they made. You can't lose that game. But I was real surprised that the Lions lost this because they got veterans, you know, veteran quarterback. They got a veteran running back. In my they got a lot of veterans. St. Brown, there's no need they're supposed to lose this, bro. No, no way they were supposed to lose this game. But they did. Salute to San Francisco 49ers, going to the Super Bowl, doing their thing. You ask me, they're the luckiest team right now in football. Not only do they, what, what was it, like they lost like two in a row, and then two, two uh, I don't know, two in a row, and then they had like three bad games, that or two bad games that they won. I know they lost to the Rams, Baltimore spanked them, and then, uh, no, no, actually they lost two in a row, and then won two in a row in the playoff. Let me say it right. But both wins to me look like a miracle, bro. I mean, how do you lose these games when you're up and your team is moving the ball like Green Bay and Detroit were? Now, I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to make this shit clear right now. Don't let Patrick Mahomes be up on these cats like that. If Frisco thinks that it's in them to keep coming back, I got news for them motherfuckers. Patrick Mahomes, you give him a 10-point lead. You might as well kiss your, you might as well just go to sleep because you ain't going to wake up. Mahomes is not going to surrender a 10-point lead. Only time I ever seen him surrender a lead was at the uh, AFC Championship game against the Bengals, and that wasn't even his fault. I'm going to tell you what went down there. You have McCole Harmon and Tyreek Hill arguing on the sidelines about catches, about who should get the ball more when they had a 10-point lead. So I already knew that was set up for destruction. Karma went and whipped on them real quick. Cincinnati came back and then beat them in overtime on that McMahon, uh, uh, you know what I mean? McMahon field goal, whatever, whatever. Cincinnati went to the Super Bowl, lost to the Rams. But that's about the only game I remember that Mahomes was really, like, up and gave it away. But I'm going to tell you right now, bro, he's on another planet right now. Frisco don't bring their A game. Frisco don't start out like Green Bay and Detroit did. They ain't winning, bro. I'm, I'm telling you right now. They got to set the tone in the Super Bowl. 
and then let Mahomes come back. And you already know Mahomes can do that too. Did it against the Titans down like, what was it, like 14 points. Texans down like 23 points in the playoff. Came back both of those games and won. Mahomes, one thing about Mahomes, and I'm not here trying to sweat Mahomes, but he the GOAT right now, man. As far as right now in the league, I mean. Not all time. This guy could beat you in so many ways, man. Let me tell you something, man. Like, I seen him play this year. I'm thinking, though, man, he don't even look like the Mahomes I'm accustomed to seeing. That's why I thought they had no chance to win at all. But my man, he got me like this. I ain't got nothing to say wrong about that, man. I seen it with my own eyes. I visualized it, how he's taking this here to a whole other level. This guy is playing like he's 36 years old, bro. That's how much experience he looks out on the field. This guy really never makes a bad throw when you think about it. His worst throw was that interception against the, um, the Raiders in that rainy day. In that rainy day, he probably never seen the dude. That's what it was. Not making excuses, but that's about the worst throw Mahomes ever made. Patrick Mahomes is as solid as they come. 49ers got their work cut out. The line is minus one for the 49ers. The chip is in two weeks in the Legion Field in Las Vegas. It's going to be incredible. And the last time they played, me and my man Noah had the Chiefs. We were losing for three and a half quarters. I even told Noah, we ain't winning this game, bro. And as soon as I like let him know, maybe a minute later, is when Mahomes, I think, hit here on that fourth down bomb. He was wide open. And the tables just turned just like that. Next thing you know, Frisco couldn't do nothing right. KC did everything right. KC ended up winning that chip. This is going to be a great Super Bowl. Frisco got all the offense. I love Debo Sanders, uh, Ayuk, C-Mac. I mean, they got everything set up. The only thing I'm worrying about Frisco is that everybody better step up. Unlike Baltimore, when Lamar didn't perform, nobody helped him. They had no running game. Nobody helped. Not even a defense helped them. Now, people might go, Al, but they shut him out in the second half. I watched the second half, man. It was, it was, uh, it, it, it was, it, what you call that shit again? It, 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 damn, what's that word I'm looking for, man? Well, it, basically, they were playing the field position. That's what it is. Mahomes and them played field position. They killed the clock, punked them deep. Killed the clock. Pumped them deep because they knew Lamar couldn't move the ball against them. That's a fact. But like I said, Brock Purdy, Mahomes, Brock Purdy got the better roster. Mahomes the better quarterback. But the way Kansas City's playing right now, especially on defense, if they defense can contain the Niners, let me explain to you what contain means. Keep them within, let's say, 24 points, 27 maybe or less. That's contain. I didn't say shut them out. Contain. They could do that. Patrick Mahomes going to win another Super Bowl. He's good for at least 27, 28 points. I'm telling you right now. That year against Tampa Bay, they had no line. If you notice, every time he threw the ball, Shaq Barrett, all them niggas were all on my home. No excuse. Not making no excuse. You know, I had Tampa that day. I, loved, I liked Tampa with Tom Brady. But they couldn't block for him. Yesterday, without the star guard and Thuni, look at the game. I just watched the game again. Baltimore cannot put no pressure on Mahomes. And when they decided to put a little pressure, he danced on them. They had no pressure on Patrick Mahomes. 49ers want to win this game. They're going to have to score first, score a lot, and put pressure on Patrick Mahomes. Tune in this Friday. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have my man Big T on Friday because we planning to do a different segment. So I might not have Big T, but I'm definitely going to have my old school cats back on the show. We're going to break down this game from other perspectives, and we're going to give you a lot of other stuff. But me and T is going to break down the whole Super Bowl. Y'all want to look out for that video? Of course, T's going for Kansas City. And, of course, I got to play uh, Devil's Advocate. I have to play Devil's Advocate with him. But I had to do this video here. I had to make sure... That I gave y'all my, you know what I'm saying, my opinion on shit. Because I see Stephen A. Smith and all these cats giving theirs. And a lot, of, a lot of them are right. And I'm going to keep it real. I cannot back Patrick, uh, um, Lamar Jackson. I can't. 
But don't say he didn't deserve the bag. I don't want nobody posting he didn't deserve the bag. The playoffs is a different entity than a regular season. Lamar won MVP, so what are you talking about he didn't deserve the bag? Look at, the, look, look at his body of work. They don't, they don't give you the bag because you could win the chip. They give you the bag because they want you to perform on a high level, fill up the stadiums. Now, they hope you win the chip when they give you the bag. You will hope that, but they just want you to be solid all year round so that we fill up the seats, the owners, and you get people to come. We, we win in, and everybody I mentioned, you all win. But they don't win the big ones. Let me say the names again. Kirk Cousins, Donovan McNabb, Tony Romo. None of them win the big game. And now you could throw Lamar Jackson in there cleanly. I love Lamar, but Lamar, it is what it is, my dude. To you win the big one, I can't give it up to you, brother. I love you regular season, but that's all you are. Like Dak Prescott, a great regular season quarterback. Al York Sports, I hope you guys enjoy the show. Put your comments in. If you disagree with me, I don't I don't care. I always tell y'all opinions are like assholes. Everybody got one. But I'm telling y'all now, I'm gonna give y'all solid shit. So it's gonna be hard to disagree when I'm giving you solid shit. Hold your head like y'all. I'm gonna see y'all Friday and look out for that that big T Al York video. We're going to do it in a different area. We're going to have camera niggas there. We're going to go nuts on this Super Bowl shit. So make sure you guys tune in. I love you guys. Keep your head up, man. I hope you guys enjoy the whole weekend, and I hope y'all made money, man. You see my teaser came in easy. Easy. Cheese plus nine and a half. The over 46 Frisco. They scored 65 total. Cheese won by seven and a half plus nine and a half. You do the math. Hold your head. Love y'all.